All right, guys, let me make sure this is streaming on YouTube because I always get a little, you know, this tech stuff is a little eek. All right, so let's see, what do we have here? I'm still thinking, okay, I think I'm live right now. All right, guys, welcome. So in today's video, I wanna talk about how to turn your brick and mortar tax office virtual, right? So if you have already been doing taxes, you already have a built up tax client base. A lot of people, um, tax professionals that I speak to from all over the country, they're like, Krista, how can I go virtual? Like, how does that happen? Right? So I actually want to take you through my journey on how I transitioned all of my um, tax clients that were coming into my office to becoming virtual clients. So quick introduction, welcome. If you are new to me, my name is Krista. I am an enrolled agent by the Internal Revenue Service. And I also have a program called Tax and Accounting Clients on Demand that walks you through on how to use social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Instagram to get tax and bookkeeping clients consistently. So the goal of this program is to help you grow a six figure business. So I'll put some links below that you can check out. Um, also, we're having a live webinar tonight. We're gonna be doing a live training every Thursday night. So I'm gonna put that link below so you guys can check that out too. All right, so let's talk about transitioning, okay? So obviously I got into the tax business several years ago. And when I first started, you know, I did everything that, you know, the traditional tax offices did. You know, I scouted for a tax office. I found one that I liked. Um, I paid thousands of dollars to get a sign outside of that office to kind of furnish that office. And I finally was in business, right? I remember having people um, stand outside, shaking a sign, passing out flyers. Like I did all the things, right, to get people to come into that tax office so I can do their taxes. And I end up building up my business to a little over 300 tax clients over, you know, like two to three seasons. And so I was making a six figure income. You know, I was doing well. Um, at some point, I eventually started doing well. Um, we'll talk about some nuances on the webinar. But what I learned was that I was spending so much money just having a brick and mortar and I really didn't need it. Right. Um, and so here's what happened. So when you're, when you are kind of like in the heart of tax season and you're still running your business the traditional way, that means you have to have people come into your office. People physically have to give you paperwork and you have to sit there and do their taxes. Now, some people might drop off their documents. Other people will sit directly in front of you while you are preparing their taxes. Taxes. So I remember very vividly having people waiting in my lobby. I remember having children in my lobby. I remember offering people coffee and candy and cookies. I tried to have, you know, like little snacks on hand. And I remember feeling overwhelmed because I would be working with the tax client in front of me. And then I would literally look over and it would be five people in my lobby. And I was the only person preparing taxes. And I remember just feeling like overwhelmed. And obviously I got it done. That's how all the other tax offices were doing it. It. That's how, you know, the big brands were doing it, right? You go in, you sit down, you somebody prepares your taxes, you get your documents and you leave. Now with the, really with technology and how everything is so, um, you know, cloud-based, you have the capability, the functionality, the security, most importantly, to work virtual. And so what I end up doing that third or fourth year, I said enough is enough. I was spending, you know, 15 plus thousand dollars a year just in rent. Um, that's not including utilities. That's not including gas, water, um, cable and internet. Honestly, when you look at your tax office, it's a whole nother household, right? Because you have to pay for the exact same things at your tax office that you do at home. And so you are literally taking care of two households. And so I looked at this astronomical expense on my profit and loss and every year was gut-riching. It was almost $20,000 in just rents and overhead that went straight out the door, right? And so that third or fourth year, I was like, man, enough is enough. I'm, I'm going to try to get as many clients as possible to go virtual. And this was the year of like 2015, 2016, where I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not sitting with everybody. 
Um, I'm not going to have people waiting in my lobby anymore. I'm going to get everybody virtual. And so here's the benefits, right? When you actually have people submitting over their tax documents, their source documents to you, you get to control your workflow, right? You're not pressured to complete a tax return in the next 30 to 45 minutes. You aren't pressured because there's several people waiting in your lobby. And so what I did, I created a system around um, people being able to submit over their source documents to me securely. And then I created a process to where I get to now prepare those tax returns at my own time, at my own pace that felt good for me, that didn't overwork me, that allowed me some time to breathe. And that also allowed me to make sure that my clients were getting the the best possible results, right? I had time and energy to make sure that they were getting all the credits and the, and the deductions that they were entitled to. So going virtual has so many different benefits. One, you're going to save on overhead tens of thousands of dollars. And now the, the critical part about that is if you are just preparing taxes and you don't have that monthly residual income when it comes to bookkeeping or offering any CFO services, anything that you're going to be paid on retainer or every single month, it's really hard. Even when you make over 50 grand or at least $100,000, it's still hard to live off that money for the entire year. So you have to take in consideration like having overhead like that, the traditional way, um, it's just going to eat into your profits because what else could you do with the extra $20,000? You know, when I looked at it, I spent almost, you know, over $100,000 just on rents and utilities. And I think about like, wow, like what, like what could I have done with the extra $100,000 right now? Right? Like I could have bought investment properties. I could have cash flow coming in right from that investment property. So I want you to hear that there are not only benefits in savings and net profits, to your business, but also you're just going to have a more of a systemized workflow. You're going to be able to work more smarter, work more efficiently. You aren't going to be rushed that much. You're still going to be rushed because it's tax season, but, you, but you're going to have systems and processes in place. So in order for you to transition from brick and mortar to actual virtual, you need to make sure that you are um, communicating with your clients. And really, that is the only pillar that you have to abide by with this transition. And I'm going to be honest, it's not going to all happen the very first year. Everybody is not going to transition over the very first season that you go virtual, right? You got to give people one to two seasons to get acclimated with the new process, but you it starts with communicating. So let me tell you what I did. That tax season, I think it was the end of 2015, going into to the 2016 tax season, um, I emailed all of my clients and I said, hey, this is how we're going to work now. We're going to be virtual. You're going to submit over your source documents to us using this secure link. And this is how we're going to do your tax return. We're going to make sure that you're, you know, that uh, we're going to give you even better quality service because now we have the capacity and the time and energy to make sure that you're claiming all of the credits and deductions that you're legally entitled to. And it's also going to allow us to be a better service to you because now we're going to have more capacity to handle any customer service requests and so forth, right? So I remember writing all of this out. I'm selling them the benefit on why they need to do virtual, right? Um, I even sold them on the benefit of, you know, you don't no longer have to come in um, and wait, right? You can actually submit securely over your documents to me while you're on your lunch break at work or while you're sitting at your desk and your tax return will be completed within 48 to 72 hours. Now, what this did, it gave me time and energy to actually do the tax return because you, you wanna make sure that you under promise and over deliver. Right, so under promise, over deliver. You wanna tell people, if you think it's gonna take you a day to get the tax return done, tell them it's gonna take three days, right? And then send it to them back within that 24 hour time frame. But you wanna make sure that you have a system that as you're receiving source documents, that you're completing the first in kind of first out process. You're completing those people that submitted over their tax documents, you're going over their return, and then you're submitting it back to your client for review and for their electronic signature. So the very first thing that I did, I emailed everybody. The second thing that I did, I sent a physical um, newsletter out. Now, this did cost a little bit of money. You know, when you have over uh, hundreds of clients, you know, you got to pay for um, stamps, you know, um, envelopes, and then, you know, the ink to actually print the paper. But it was worth it because I wanted to be sure 
that I reached everybody because to be honest, not all of my clients gave me their email or I might have not been asking for email from every client, right? Um, some clients were older, some clients were retired. And so I wanted to make sure that I was able to communicate with as many clients as possible. So I made sure that I had multiple ways to contact them, multiple ways to get over this new information that we are now transitioning to a virtual office. So the first step was to email. The second step was to to send a physical newsletter stating our new process. The third step was we physically called everybody. And I remember I had my brother working with me at the time. I had my cousin and we literally called everybody and we were setting virtual appointments, right? Where they had a specific date and time that we wanted them to submit over their source documents. Now, when you do that, people, like when you give people a process, a clear step-by-step -step process that builds trust, that builds credibility. As long as they know what's expected of them, they will follow the process. You just have to let them know. And some people were like, oh, Krista, you know, I'm going to be honest. And for those of you who actually have tax clients and you meet them face-to-face, -face, you know this to be true. When you're meeting your clients face to face, you do build a relationship, a deeper bond with them, right? So there were a lot of my tax clients that I love like family, right? We would sit down every year and it was just like this annual catch up, right? It was just like the year would have went past but as soon as I saw them, it was like nothing changed. Like we just immediately reconnected. We immediately had a bond and they updated me about, you know, their life, their children. You know, I knew about their family. So that is one of the cons of going virtual is that you do lose some of that connection. Right. But you know, it's also going to help you have the capacity to take on more people. Because when I went virtual, instead of being able only to do, let's just say 10 tax returns a day. Let's just say it was taking me an hour to do a tax return. And I know it took me way less time than that. But let's just say it took me an hour to do a tax return. That's 10 hours a day. And imagine doing that rushed with somebody physically just staring at you in your face, right? Now you're rushing. Now you're trying to hurry up and get them out because you got people waiting. Now I can actually complete, you know, 15, 20 tax returns in a day because now I have the time, space, and capacity to sit there in my own little, um, in my own little space and do the tax return, right? I'm not rushed. Um, the process is actually a lot more efficient. And I have a way, a secure way that I'm communicating with my clients. So what I just said here was I want you to email all of your clients, letting them know the new process and listing out a step by step way that they're going to submit over source documents to you, how they're going to communicate. I want you to list out and let them know what the time turnaround would be for from the point that they actually submit over source documents to you, you need to let them know exactly when they can expect a return back, a completed return. So once you give your people a step-by-step -step process, now it's just communicating that process to them. And you want to make sure that you're communicating in multiple different channels based upon their preferred way to contact. Now, I do have elderly um, clients, right? You know, clients that are retired, clients that are in their 80s or 90s, right? And so so what I did for them, they can mail in their tax documents. I do have, you know, or I did have a few clients that would actually put all of their source documents in a manila envelope and they will um, mail it to me, right? And then I would complete their tax return. I'll call them over the phone, let them know I received it, make sure that we had all the information. I would complete everything, review the return with them, mail it back to them, right? With, with some stamps that they can remail back to me, right? And that was very few people. That was very few people that I had to do that for, but I was respecting the way that they wanted to do business. And that was for my, like, my elderly clients. Um, other times I would just ask them to leverage their, their daughter or their their son, their, um, their children, right? Can you have your child take a picture and send it with the secure link? Um, can you take a picture? You'd be surprised that these older people, like they are more technical savvy than they let on, right? You just have to show them and coach them and walk them through the process. And once they get acclimated, with that process, now it's just seamless, right? So the first season is definitely a learning curve. When you're going from brick and mortar to virtual, it's definitely a learning curve. It's definitely a lot more energy expended that first season, but you're gonna think about the capacity then the next season. Like what I say this all the time, short-term pain for long-term gain, right? It's in the moment, it's a little painful, it's a little uncomfortable because you gotta do all this work. But in the long run, you're gonna be able to serve more people, 
You're going to be able to serve them at a higher capacity and you're going to be able to net more profits right now. I do want to put out a disclaimer because I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an office right there are certain cases where having an office makes sense, in which case I do tell people to try to get a co working space or try to get a office suite. You don't need a traditional brick and mortar building a standalone building is what I'm talking about. So I don't want you guys to get confused about that there are you know certain cases where I do say have an office or in cases where you just don't have the space um, or the quiet, um, just the freedom to have a home office, in which case you do want to get a, um, a, a co-working space, but you don't have to go with those standalone offices and pay thousands of dollars. Ideally, if you do get an office, you want to get something where the rent um, the utilities is included in the rent. And what I mean by utilities, I mean everything like heat, water, gas, and also internet uh, for one low price, right? Anywhere between 350 to maybe about $550 per month is doable for you. It's totally doable. So what questions do you guys have about this process? So I'm going to go ahead and look at the chat. Hey guys, welcome live. If you have any questions, drop them below. Um, hey, Keisha. Hey, John. Hey, Sabrina. All right, great guys. I've seen an office suite for rent. Yeah. So Davida, if it's, you know, if it's in an office suite and, you know, they're offering you utilities included, you know, preferably internet included, you know, preferably, um, I say go for it, go for it. But you still want to train your clients to be as virtual as possible. Even when you have an office, still try to get them as virtual as possible because, like I said, you're going to be able to actually serve more people when you don't have a lobby full of people waiting for you and, you know, and you're just running around. I'm telling you guys, it is so beneficial. So let me tell you, so that was the first season. The first season was a little chaotic, right? The second and the third season, everybody just knew what to do. I just, I will wake up and I will literally have 20 people submit over their tax documents, 20 tax returns, just in the morning, right? Wake up to it. Because what happened, people were like, oh, this is great. And then when they got home, when they put their kids to bed or when they just got time, they'll be on their couch, on their computer with their ice cream submitting over their tax documents, right? It's even a great customer experience for your clients. And then when you wake up, now you just prioritize your workflow. You systematically get your, um, your you communicate with your clients, let them know that you received their documents and, um, to, and then continue the onboarding and the tax preparation process. So guys, this is gonna be such a game changer for you. It's gonna allow you to have so much capacity. You're gonna be able to serve more people, make more money at the end of the day, net more money at the end of the day. Um, so if you have any questions about this process, and what I went over, definitely drop your comments below. I definitely want to help you. I want to help as many people as possible. Also, again, like I said, we are having a live webinar tonight um, and every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can actually join me live and I'll walk you through on how to use social media to get tax and bookkeeping clients consistently. And if you want more help with that, I'm going to make an offer at the end um, so we can work together and you can actually get my direct support to help you grow to six figures. So check out those links below. And guys, I'll talk to you um, next time. Have a great rest of the evening and hopefully I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.